Hey there, I hope you're doing wonderful. My name is Nates and if you need some help with your storyline project, maybe it's just a bug or you want a full review, jump over to storyaudit.eu and I'll help you out. Right, now we have a video about unlocking the next button, so let's go right into it. So here's my slide. I have a few buttons, the slide is long, three seconds, and then we jump to the next one. So we want to lock this until user completes the slide, which could be any number of things. Maybe you want to, you know, audio to end or they have to do something on the slide itself. So first let's lock it in. So I'll start by creating a variable for this slide because I want to track this. So I'm going to usually I go with this slide 01 or if you have multiple scenes, it's maybe 0101 or something like that true, false, and false by default. Now the first trigger is we want to disable the next button. So when timeline start action is change state of, of next button to state disabled when timeline starts. Like that would be the most basic thing. But we're using a variable because we want to track this. So we'll say if slide 01 equals false. So when it's false, as but next button is disabled. Okay. Now, when are we gonna enable the next button? And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do it with the, the next trigger. We're gonna change the state of the next button to normal when, now here's the magic, variable changes, slide zero one. So the variable which will change to true some point on the slide, you know, at some point in the user's interaction or whatever they do. And because it's a variable changes, it's only going to go to true. So if you're repeating the slide and everything repeats again, it goes to true again, which means you don't even care about that because it's already true. Because when you change true to true, guess what you get? Okay. So these are the two main triggers that you would have. And what's great about this, you can just copy this on other slide and just change the variable to slide two, slide three, and so on. Now, all that is left is your decision on what has to be completed on this slide in order for vari variable to become true. So one way, if you have a audio slide, you know, you would just do the following. You would say, adjust variable slide one to true when timeline ends this slide you know so when timeline ends uh the variable will go to true because the variable will change the next button will unlock and let's look at this now so it's locked and timeline ends bam it's unlocked easy now when you have a more complex thing you just want to track whatever it is the user has to do. So let's say they have to click on all these three buttons. You know, I have visited states here. So I will say when, I'm oh sorry, when, when, when this one. So just, this is the same. Now when is the, the, the thing here we have to change when state of these three objects is visited. Storyline already suggests this. Okay. Ta, 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 ta. You see it's unlocked, it's still unlocked. I click the first one, click the second one. When I click the third one, bam, it unlocks. So as I said, all you need to do is copy these two triggers. You go to the next slide, you paste them in, you change the variables to slide two and here to slide two. And then again, you would adjust that last part to whatever the conditions have to be in order for variable to change again to, um, you know, to true. So this is a great way because if you're resetting the slide to initial state when revisiting, the button will be still unlocked if user returns to this slide. Because I, I often reset the slides because, you know, it just makes sense because if it's slide uh, explains something and there, you know, there's more to it, it doesn't make sense just to resume it at when timeline ends because you then you just have to repeat it and everything. So if you reset to initial state, 
slide slide goes from the beginning however the variable is still true and the button will be unlocked also because you're tracking everything you can easily like have a custom menu where you can look if the slide 5 is true then you can you know enable some things and so on so this version of unlocking the slide gives you more options later to you know manipulate anything because you have everything tracked in variables there you go if you like this video and want to support me there's a link below to buy me a coffee i like a lovely cappuccino so thank you and i'll see you in the next video